E7, trailing a mass on a string. I was trying to find something online that was copyright free on this. I couldn't really find anything, but I found that I did it in class with a little mass that made a sound that was demonstrating the Doppler effect. So I was swinging this in class. So we'll use this as the given problem. And the question is, in this case, if we're given this information, two complete revolutions in one second, which is basically what I was doing. This is like real life data. And the mass is a tenth of a kilogram. Again, fairly related to the actual experiment. And the radius of the circle is 70 centimeters, 0.7 meters. Again, very, very much from the problem itself. Then find the tension in the rope. A very clever student took a buzzer from a car and put a nine volt battery on there. It was one of those things where if the key is not in, you get a little buzzer, a little warning if you open the door or something like that with the key in. So he gave me that and by spinning it around, we demonstrate the Doppler effect. A Doppler is covered somewhere in this course later. So for this problem, let me skip the diagram for a second. We got circular motion so that the tension in the string that's, or the little rope there, that's pulling, pulling uh, toward the center is going to be F equals MA, which is MV squared over R since we have circular motion. And it's given in the problem that here I got 2 pi R over T. In other words, here I'm going to be doing said two circumferences per second. So that means this is going to be 2 pi 0.7 meters and the time's going to be half a second for one of them. Because the given, the problem gave us that you go around twice in one second. So this is one circumference in half a second and that's 8.7965 meters per second. So we want to put that in here. We want to put in here the 0.7 meters and we want to put in here the 0.1 kilogram. So with the calculator when you do that you get 11 newtons which is about two and a half pounds. Remember one pound is 4.45 newtons. So if you hit that with that, you're gonna get two and a half pounds. But what's holding that mass up? Well, if you look carefully at this diagram, you'll see that I am sloping up very, very slightly there. And that has to be the case. And now we'll give the force diagram. This has to be the case that we're sloping up slightly. I'm going to exaggerate here. Right. This will be a small angle. And there's mg. I'm going to try to do it more realistic. There you go. So there's, there's the angle. So it's more like it's more like the case here on the, on the right. So if this is a sketch, now we'll give the steps. Then here, well, actually this is, this is uh, if, I do, if I did a sketch, I would probably do this. Like this, that's the sketch. And then here, this would be the force diagram. And it could probably do a little better than that for a homework problem, maybe something like this. Yeah, that, that looks that looks a little better than that. That's pretty bad. That looks a little better. 
So the force diagram would be going toward the center. Remember the acceleration is toward the center when you have circular motion. So this is tension, T times the cosine of theta is MA, which you could then write as MV squared over R, and T times the sine of theta going up has to, well, I'll put down minus MG equals zero. And then we'll look at these equations and say that T cosine of theta, mv squared over r, t sine of theta is mg. All right, so now I'm gonna solve for that angle and show you that small for the parameters that we have. Here I'm gonna divide these equations. I'm gonna take this equation, t sine of theta, the left side divided by the left side here, so this is gonna be mg divided by mv squared over r. The m's will cancel, and I'll get g r over v squared. So the tangent of theta is g r over v squared. See, there's two unknowns here, really. It's the tension t and the angle theta. You have two equations with two unknowns you can solve. So here, I'm gonna find what that angle is. And if I put in for G, 9.8, I put in for R, the 0.7 meters, and I put in for V, this velocity, I then get the tangent is 0.0, .0 eight, eight, like six, six, and the angle comes out to be about five degrees. So that's not, you know, to one significant figure, it's five degrees. It's like 5.1 degrees. So that's a very, very, very small, say, angle, since 90, you know, gets you the right, the right angle. So what about the tension? Is it, is it gonna mess up our sloppiness at the beginning where we, we didn't take all this subtlety into consideration. All right, so let's just go ahead and remind us that this uh, here are the equations. And then here we have the solve, all right, four steps. So to complete the solve, I want to find out what T is. So I'm gonna use this equation, T sine of theta is mg T is mg over sine of theta. Now sine of a small angle is small, say. So you're gonna find here, if you do this, plugging in the 0.1 kilogram for the m, the 9.8, and here, uh, you wanna kinda of like round off last, so that five degrees before I round it off was that. And then if you do that, you get 11.079, which to two significant figures is 11 Newtons, which means that we were okay, kind of assuming that that was just flat, but you really can't do that because if it were perfectly flat, you wouldn't have equilibrium in the up and down direction. You have to have a component of force going up. So I wanted to explain that subtlety and work it out in detail.